Check this out. What does that mean? Forks, rock, a big hole in the ground. Wow, a lot of stacked rocks. And since we've been on this property, Carolyn has been asking me, can we do a cellar? Can we do a cellar? When can we do a cellar? We need to get a cellar in. That is exciting. Hey, you guys, I've got a project I'm really excited about that I've been meaning to share with you. I'm back behind the house here. We're taking a step that we've wanted to take for so many years to add a layer of resiliency to what we're doing. And uh, I meant to get it right from the beginning, but it got ahead of me because I had some folks here working some equipment going. And um, But I want to jump in here because I'm going to bring you along on this journey. It's going to take quite a bit of time to get this done. Check this out. What does that mean? Forks, rock big hole in the ground. Wow. And a lot of stacked rocks. Check that out. That is exciting. We have 12 people in our home every day. We often have 14, 16 people, sometimes 20 people here that we're feeding. So we, we do grow a lot of food and we got to buy a bit of food too. It's a lot of people to feed, to take care of. But one of our biggest challenges over the years has been storage of that food. Of course, we can, and we freeze, and we dehydrate, and now we freeze dry. If you saw that, that video of the freeze dryer from Carolyn not too long ago on how valuable that freeze dryer is, it is awesome. We're also always trying to work with natural systems to do low energy, and we're trying to grow food that grows well here. And for us, root crops grow really, really well here. It's a good environment for them, as do some of the brassicas like cabbages. And storing them has been a big challenge. And we've done everything over the last uh, 20 years. From sticking them in the crawl space to the house, to putting them in a closet in the north corner, or under the bed, or in an ice chest in... Uh, the garage. Uh, we've done it all. And you know what? You work with what you have, you guys. You work with what you have. But our scale has grown over the years. And uh, especially once we got onto this property and we were able to expand into bigger gardens and actually start providing. We've never known where the top was. We've had so many people to provide for with this big family. We've just always been growing as much as we can. And usually we can get it with meat, but with vegetables and fruits and other things, uh, you know, we've got to buy in. And we're having to do that less and less. But growing things that grow well that allow us to do that requires requires storage space. And we've been using the basement, which can be another great place, but there's some challenges with our basement. It doesn't stay cool enough. And so it works. We get through winter. We don't usually get through the hunger gap, if you're familiar with that, in that time where you're getting into spring, everything's growing outside, but there's nothing to eat yet and you're running out of everything inside or often in our case it's not that it's, we're running out but everything is stored so long and not great ideal conditions so it's so it's starting to go and we've got to use it up or give it to the animals or whatever and since we've been on this property carolyn has been asking me can we do a cellar can we do a cellar when can we do a cellar we need to get a cellar in i've been trying to figure out how can we do a cellar that's big enough for us without it being extremely costly and along with a cellar and this hillside behind the house, when we got here, the hillside was encroaching on the house because it's kind of steep. See that there's kind of a step in the property and this was originally encroaching on the house and we needed to do this in addition because we needed some extra space for the kids. Um, but we also needed to get this away from the house and then how do we prevent this from continuing to fall down in a road and, and move back over toward the house. So I've been researching and looking at different ways over the last few years in, um, what's going to be the most cost effective way to do this and we just grade the hill and plant something on it that probably would be the most cost effective way but um with kids and things going on it's just still going to degrade and we needed the cellar so i was really inspired by sep holzer and what uh, he does in his hillside because he has a very terraced landscape and he builds these animal pens out of stone and logs to hold the animals in in the winter. And I'm not, I've not seen that he's done a cellar like this. I can't imagine he hasn't. I'm sure somebody has. It's been tough to research though. And so after running the numbers and thinking about doing concrete 
which is kind of the, the next really alternative way. But the concrete is expensive. It was way expensive. And I was just going, I don't know how we're ever going to get that done. It's going to take years to save up for that. And it's taken years and we've been saving in the meantime to get this done. But it hit me one day looking at a book at what uh, Seth was doing. It was like, why don't I do that for our hillsides? But why don't I do that for our cellar? Why don't we take stone? This is the cheapest stone we could find. I don't remember what the cost per ton is, and it's still, you know, got a pretty significant cost to it. We are on our way to a new cellar, and this is really, really exciting, you guys. You know, a cellar you want down in the earth. The, the earth, when you get deep enough, a few feet down, generally stays at an even temperature in the 50s, which is ideal for cellaring. What we decided to do, since we needed to do this retaining wall, is to go ahead and get this in now. And uh, this is gonna be fun, it's gonna be cool. It's really, really, you know, natural and rustic and uh, raw, just dry stacking these large stones. But with this, we're able to get more space. Sometimes efficiencies of large equipment and larger materials, because you're here anyways, this allowed us to make this larger. And so in the end of it, Hopefully this is gonna be at least 12 foot wide and 24 foot deep. We're gonna stack these stones up about seven foot high. And, and then we're gonna take logs from our own property in the back and we're gonna build a roof on this with the logs and then wa you know, waterproof it, dry proof it. And uh, we'll cover it back up with, with uh, some of the earth back here. This is really, really exciting. Wanted to share this with you guys. Uh, it's a problem we've been working to solve for a long time, and it's obviously a big scale problem, but we needed something large scale and that we could afford to do. And um, this is gonna be a little rough. It's gonna be a little rustic. Uh, the walls aren't gonna be smooth, obviously. So that may present a few challenges in use, but it's doable, it's getting it done. And it, I think it's gonna have a, a, a cool factor, a wow factor on top of it. And yet we're using materials that are readily available and you know relatively low cost uh, besides the scale i'll keep you updated as we move along and share the journey with you this is probably going to take us over a year to get done uh, we'll get the stonework done here this summer and fall probably have to cut the trees and start working on that next year and then there's all the interior stuff hey if you have any resources i've been researching a lot so i'm going to ask you guys something I've done quite a bit of research on cellaring and particularly old world cellaring, what they did and who, who you know, anybody build things like this. And you also get into managing the air and the humidities and the temperatures. And, you know, most things you need different temperatures, you know, uh, some things you need a little warmer and drier or a little cooler and damper. And, you know, you can divide spaces off, but a little bit of research I've been coming across also says that you can manipulate the airflow by where you put your, your vents bringing air in and your vents bringing your air out to where you can use one space and create a few different like microclimates as it were. But I'm not finding a lot of detailed information. If any of you have studied this, um, done anything like this and have really good detailed information, I would love it if you would share it either in the comments on YouTube for everybody to benefit from or uh, you can email me and let me know. I'd love that information and I'll bring it into the story and share it with everybody else as we learn and we build this thing.